And then this is obviously going to be a big one. You know, national television, ESPN game day is going to be here. Where do you think the emotional maturity of, of this team is to handle an environment like mm -hmm. that? It's kind of new for a lot of, a lot of guys. Yeah. Um, you know, I think we're going to approach it the same way we approach every other game. All the outside noise doesn't really matter to us. Um, we're going to come in. We're going to game plan how we do uh, on a normal week. And uh, we're going to come in and, and work hard. I know you've said numerous times before that like how you judge yourself is whether or not the team wins. Last last year's Florida game, you played reasonably well, threw for over 200 yards, a couple touchdowns, didn't throw a pick. Do you think you played well? The the game was lost, you played well. How would you grade yourself in last year's Florida game? Uh, I would give myself a D. You know, I, I hold myself to extremely high standards um, to almost be perfect, you know, in a sense. But, you know, that's not possible. But it's close to – perfect as I can get um, and I honestly just judge it off of are we winning like am I doing my job in order for us to win if I'm not then it's not a good game and then one of the topics we talked to you about before the season was you enjoying yourself and sort of playing football like you play basketball has that been a reality and why so far yes it has you know just kind of keeping that smile on my face and and uh, enjoying my teammates uh, through the process. Me and Joe always remind each other of, of just staying loose on the sideline and um, you know, enjoying the process of going to practice and the workouts after practice and then the, the whole game day experience, um, just soaking it all in. Um, but you know, I haven't played to my standards yet, uh, but you know, we've been winning ball games and that's the, the total, um, the total end, end story that, that I'm looking for is are we winning? It doesn't matter how, how I play or if, how somebody else plays. If, or if we're winning, then that's what I'm concentrating on. And then how would you evaluate the, the run game overall through three games this season? It looks like there, there's been some good things, but also maybe some yards that were left on the field a little mm -hmm. bit. Yeah, we've had, we've had a, um, you know, a couple of, of yards. We definitely um, would love to have. Um, our backs are running extremely hard. I'm very proud of them and very proud of our, our, our guys up front and our guys outside. They've, been, they've done a, a great job blocking on the perimeter. And um, you know, our interior line has done a great job of communicating up front and getting twists passed off and uh, you know, getting to that next level um, as far as you know, double teams and, and uh, pulls. You know, everybody's just playing extremely hard with a chip on their shoulder. Um, you know, we have something to prove, and, and that's what we're going to do uh, day in and day out. And then I know it's early in the week, but what do you know about this version of that Gator defense? Kind of what, what do they do well? What do they mm -hmm. show on tape so far? Yeah, you know, um, up front, extremely athletic, um, you know, great in size. They have great guys uh, up front that play extremely hard and uh, get to the football, you know, with bad intentions, which is, is great for a, for a defensive up front. Um, you know, that linebacker position, they have some, some seasoned guys in there at the mic position, uh, some young guys um, at that boundary spot. Um, then the secondary plays extremely aggressive as well. Um, they're, they're good in, in open field tackles and, and getting the nose on the ball, um, you know, which is something that a lot of defensive coaches uh, preach, you know, getting 11 to the ball, which, is they, which they do well. Um, you know, in coverage, they're really physical. So, um, you know, we got to come to play just like every other week. Uh, Hendon, in this offense, how does having experience change what you can do within this offense? Um, you know, the same way in, in every other offense, you get to see different intricacies of the offense, um, you know, come out when you have um, a broad understanding of, of what you're trying to do. Um, I definitely feel like the chemistry amongst the players definitely takes the, um, I don't know how to put it, really, I guess the, the, end, the end factor or end goal um, of going off schedule in a sense. Um, you know, if, if it's some things that we have to improvise on or it's a look that we didn't plan for, um, we're a lot, a lot more knowledgeable of how to dissect that and um, get the end result that we want. And as, as many times as you've thrown the ball, really throughout your career, but especially here, you don't throw a lot of picks. Why is that? Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the main focus uh, for me is taking care of the team, and the ball is the team. So, um, you know, just taking care of the ball is, is something that has been preached to me since I was a uh, young age. And um, I can always remember, like in high school, we throw the ball like nine times a game. I'd go like eight for nine, 218, with three touchdowns. And 
that was a pretty good game. But, you know, we had to take advantage of every opportunity we had throwing the ball. So that still sticks with me, you know, take every opportunity, um, you know, that we have and, and make good plays, make smart plays. Uh, that's just what I try to do every day. Uh, Hendon, with, with Gerald Mincy playing his former team, has he talked about that at all since the other night? And, and how do you think he's played so far, stepping mm -hmm. into that left tackle spot? Yeah, you know, Mincy's, Mincy's been great for us. Um, you know, he brings a lot of energy to the locker room. Um, he hasn't really mentioned too much about it. Uh, he's just excited to go out there and take advantage of, of the opportunity that he has. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm excited for him uh, to, go, to go against his, his former team and, um, you know, make a statement. And two questions. One on, on Squirrel White's deep ball. How big of a catch was that for you to have complete or more tr even more trust in him mm -hmm. in a big situation to go make a play? And, and then two, when you've looked at the first three games and kind of how you started the game, you seem to have gotten hot in the second quarter. What, what do you see at the start, and why do you get going the way you have? Yeah, um, you know, to, to start off with, with Squirrel, you know, he's an incredible athlete as we we've seen on on tape. Um, you know, really, I was like, man, I hope he doesn't overrun my arm. Um, Squirrel has incredible speed, and he made an incredible play on the ball. Um, but I have full confidence in all of my receivers when, when we're on the field. Um, no matter who's out there, they, they work their tails off every day and prepare the right way. So, um, you know, there's, I have no doubt in, when the ball's in the air, they're going to go get it, or they're going to run their route how they're supposed to. They're going to make the block, uh, you know, how they were taught. So, um, you know, there's never any, any doubt in throwing anybody the ball. Um, in our receiving core or in our running back room or tight end room. So, um, you know, it was great to, to have Squirrel out there and, um, you know, get his feet wet on the outside a little bit and, and not just in the slot. Um, so that was great to see. And then, um, you know, it, sometimes you start off slow. Um, been really excited to go out there and play, so really just trying to calm down a little bit. And uh, once I get in the flow, it's, 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 uh, it gets rolling. And then you guys had great success with that option play. Give us a breakdown of that, what you saw on tape, mm -hmm. how maybe on the fly that decision to run that play, your feedback on it. Break that down for us. Yeah, um, you know, the coaches just did a great job of, of seeing that they, they were bringing the cover zero saw look and bringing both sides. Um, so, you know, just kind of zoning everything off and, and leaving the, the defensive end or the boundary safety, whoever was blitzing off that that um, short side. Um, you know, they, they were – kind of keying on me off of the, the pull reads, um, the zone reads. So we just zoned everything off, and it was one-on-one. -on -one. Um, put the guy in a bind. Is he going to take me over the back? And, um, you know, as you can see, every time I came on the edge, they were um, taking my legs out. So, um, you know, gave the, gave the back opportunity to be in open field and make great plays, which they did. And I'm curious to know what your pregame routine is, just the moments right before you come out of the tunnel. Mm -hmm. do is the purpose to calm your nerves down? And if, and if so, what do you do to kind of get your mind right? Yeah, um, you know, I just go into meditation mode, uh, put my gospel playlist on, uh, really just listen to a lot of slow jams and really just relax, um, you know, kind of go through the locker room, dap up everyone, um, just to make sure you know, to let them know, hey, I'm ready to roll. And then they, they give me the reassurance back, you know, by looking in their eye that they're ready to roll too. So. Um, yeah, just listen to my gospel playlist, meditating. Me, me and Joe, we have a devotional book that we read every day. So before the game, we'll read one or two pages. And uh, that's, that's pretty much the pregame ritual. Two more for him. A that's a perfect breakout question to that. Uh, before the Akron game, I saw your eyes darting around watching all the fans because it was a sold out crowd. Mm -hmm. So on Saturday, do you know what to expect when you're about to run through the tee? What do you think it's going to be like? Yeah, um, I think it'll be a, um, you know, a great environment. Uh, we love we love Vol Nation. They, they show us a lot of love and and we try to go put on a show every Saturday or, you know, whatever whatever day we're playing, try to put on a show for them. Um, but the support is is unbelievable and the fan base is unbelievable. And we're extremely blessed to be in this position. Uh, Henning, what's on the pregame slow jams playlist? No, nothing but gospel. Uh, I'll say Kiki Shear is uh, my go-to. Either Kiki Shear, uh, Kurt Franklin, Fred Hammond. Uh, yeah. Thanks, Henning. Yes, I appreciate y'all.